um, I guess this sounds a little cliche, but I would say families, just because that's how we ended up really becoming involved here was um, when our kids were really little and we joined the preschool and we kind of had our community of people that hide on the back of the church so that we can take our kids out when it gets loud and um, bring them in late uh, after communion or during communion for um, ch from Children's Chapel. But um, just all the children that are in the church and um, the families that I enjoy seeing, I, we talk about it every Sunday, how these kids are growing up, we're watching them grow up, and that's, that's just what keeps us um, connected to the church. <laughs> I guess to can, uh, along the same lines is the youth, the youth and the children. I mean, that's, uh, again, that's what keeps us so involved here. And um, the youth program is vibrant right now. We have a wonderful youth director who uh, keeps the kids engaged. My kids, who would probably not be um, terribly engaged in coming to uh, church on a regular basis, they will not miss EYC. That's, uh, that's a priority in their life. They're bringing their friends. They're talking about how wonderful it is. They love um, being a part of that program. They love the things that they do there. And um, I think it really helps keep them connected in a way that, that will last them, I hope, throughout uh, the rest of their lives. Uh, yes, that's a pretty easy one. Um, I mean, it costs money to do these things. We, uh, we're very passionate about uh, the programs that we have here. Like I've mentioned, everything with the youth and the children and the programs that Boykin puts together for the church and the, the choir programs. Um, these things are expensive and, and uh, we want them to continue and if we want them to continue then we have to, we have to help fund that. So. My name is Andy Cable and uh, the way I feel most connected to God in this place is uh, the perspective that it gives me. I feel that in our daily lives we're reminded so often of how we matter and this place really tells me about the, the other things that matter in the world that we don't often get reminded about. My name is Boykin Dunlap Bell. I'm the Director of Christian Formation at the Chapel of the Cross. And my favorite memory is probably in the chapel for a service when all the power was out, the roads were icy. We walked up here, there were about six of us there. And it was beautiful and reverent and almost seemingly impossible that we all, we all gathered. Um, I definitely feel most closely connected to God right there in the chapel not just during an ice storm, but every Sunday for Children's Chapel. It is one of the most amazing services um, we have, in my opinion. It is always joyful and full of life. And the programs and ministries, um, we have so many for, for children, for adults, for everything in between. Um, but I, I love the, the energy that the children bring on Sundays, on Wednesdays, um, anytime they're here. so excited about the future of this uh, this place seeing the, you know we have seen this incredible transition uh, at this church which I'm sure in times and moments of the transition it was hard to imagine and feel this this light um, and and what we feel now um, when we are sitting there again this morning in the in the nine o'clock service it is just packed with young families. Uh, it, it's so very exciting, I think. Uh, Joe brings this tremendous energy and excitement that he will be doing in the music program, and to see that uh, thriving in ways that, uh, that it really is not is so exciting. Um, we, are, we are so deeply in love with this clergy. Um, I think there are so many things that we're excited about and for us to imagine 
as we you know begin to transition through different phases we've sent a kid off to college we've got a kid uh, who's in high school and will be going off to college and we imagine all the many different ways that we'll continue to experience the life of the chapel of the cross so we're so excited for our own future here and also just so deeply excited about what what is happening We've been doing that since we, uh, also since we started, um, and we've been fortunate that we've been able to, uh, almost every year, find ways to increase uh, the amount that we pledge. And having served on the vestry, I know how critical the campaign is to, uh, to really bring life and sustenance to what we do every single day uh, at the Chapel of the Cross. Um, we're also, part of the capital campaign because we know that's a that's a different thing that's for extending the life of the church um, but the but the annual campaign every single year is so critical for uh, for just providing this uh, the life of the church we take that that campaign we take those funds and we turn it into uh, to all the incredible things that we see here every day to the the vibrancy that is the Chapel of the Cross, which right now we just came out of church this morning and it was packed and beautiful. And I know the I know the connection between that moment and what what we do in the annual campaign. We were a couple of years in the church, and I was asked to help on a mission trip with EYC, and so we went down to Savannah. Um, and we were organizing the groups of kids and we split up as leaders and it's just it's such a powerful thing to do a mission trip and to have this time with the kids and to see them really kind of you know growing in this fellowship and community and so on the second day I took my group of kids out to our work site and just so excited about the fellowship and what we're doing and I got a call halfway through the day and they said um you forgot one of the kids and uh, I had left we were staying in a middle school and I left one of the kids there uh Gordon Morris and uh, and I just felt so terrible and I just drove so fast through the city of Savannah back there and I showed up and he was just like no, it was awesome. The people here, they just took care of me. And then we went out and I've never lived it down. So 10, 15 years later, he still, um, every time he sees me, he's like, remember that time that you forgot me in Savannah? Um, and yet, like, uh, he went on, um, he and, and Weston were both just tremendous members of the Sunday school when I taught the Sunday school and just part of the community that uh, that I've seen through working with, with youth here. And so you could have, a, I guess, a lost sheep in some way, um, but to the power of the fold and of the community of these kids is just one of the things that I love the most about the Chapel of the Cross.